So hey, good morning. It has now been exactly three months since I had my laparoscopic hysterectomy and had everything removed. And I mean everything, total hysterectomy. And I'm now feeling flipping fantastic. I want to give you an update on all of the topics that I went over in this video when I was at my six week post-op recovery point because a lot has happened in the next six weeks. Plus, I want to share with you what's going on with my hormone replacement therapy. At week three, which I shared in this video, I started using the estradiol transdermal patch. And I want to let you know if that's working for me or if I've changed anything. And then because it is a beautiful day outside, I'm going to hang out by the pool later today. So while I'm out there, I want to show you my belly, what my scars look like, and tell you something that I discovered about all of this while I was hanging out in my pool last weekend. So stick around with me in this video. If you're a gal that's gonna have a hysterectomy or you've recently had one and you're behind me in the recovery process, I think there's a lot to learn in today's video. So I'm sitting outside because I just got finished with my morning walk. And yes, now at three months, I feel like I can finally walk at my normal brisk speed. I can walk the normal distance that I would go before I had my hysterectomy. And I have my handy dandy step counter in my pocket. I've walked 6,000 steps this morning. So that's pretty good. And it's not even 10 a.m. My walks feel great. I can swing my arms. I can get my hips moving. It's not a reserved walk like it was at the six week point. I can actually get going pretty good. I can walk fast enough and brisk enough that I'm just a little bit out of breath and it just feels good. So my walking is completely back to normal. Secondly, I can now walk my dogs together. I told you all in that earlier video that I was just starting to be able to walk not normally, of course, at six weeks, but I could do some short, slow walks, and I had to walk my dogs, Maxie and Pollux, one at a time because I could not handle them pulling on me, and I couldn't walk fast enough for Pollux because he's a really brisk walker. Well, now at the three-month recovery point, I can walk the dogs together. So that is just what I finished doing this morning, and now I'm ready to get on with my day. So a house chore that I can now do normally no pain it's not uncomfortable and that is making my bed y'all up until just a couple weeks ago i had a really hard time making my bed because lifting pillows put pressure on my stomach and it was a little uncomfortable and if i needed to pull on my comforter you know it's kind of heavy so if i wanted to pull it and straighten it i couldn't pulling on things really hurt my belly but now I can make my bed perfectly fine. There's no discomfort and makes this job so much easier. And you just don't realize how much reaching and pulling and bending and lifting goes into making your bed. But when those things hurt, I was fully aware of what went into making my bed. But now that I'm healed, I can do all the things and it is great so i can get my bed made faster and just move on with my day y'all can see pollux at the top of the stairs that's because my daughter's home with her two cats and they're upstairs but while we're talking about what i can do now that i could not do before let's actually go up these stairs and i'll show you so going up and down the stairs really was no problem as long as i did it slow the problem right pollux was getting over the gate that we keep at the top of the stairs to keep the kitty cats up here away from the dogs. And now that I'm fully recovered, I can step over the gate with no problem. Hi, Mochi girl. These girls are here for the summer with me. And I come up to see them often. Oh, there's Mia. She's sunning in the front room. I gotta come see her too. What you doing, Mia? This has become her favorite spot in my desk chair. Pollux, bud? Yeah, let's go down. There we go. Something else I can now do 
without any pain or discomfort is my morning stretches. After I get in for my walk, I like to lay in the floor and do some stretching. It's not hardcore workout, but I like to stretch. And in my recovery period, there was... <laughs> There were some stretches that I just, buddy, seriously, there were some stretches I just couldn't do because it hurt my stomach. I felt like stitches were being pulled or it just made me uncomfortable. And I can now fully do all of my stretches. It feels so good to have the full length and mobility of my stomach back. I'm going to do some stretches if I can get this guy to move his booty. This feels really good. <laughs> See, I can stretch right here by turning my legs to the side and it does not hurt. I can pull my knees in all the way and this doesn't hurt. Prior to this point, this kind of hurt, having everything crunched up in your belly, but this feels really good now. So I have a video about a 10 minute stretching routine that I do every single morning. I will link it in the description box below if you wanna stretch along with me. And speaking of chores, doing the laundry was a chore that I just couldn't do for about the first, I don't know, six weeks after my surgery because I have a top load washing machine and I could not stretch and bend over to get out the laundry. Now I can reach in there. I can lift the laundry. It's fine. I can bend over and put everything in the dryer without any discomfort at all. So I'm sure my husband is happy about that one because even though he does our laundry, he washes our clothes, I handle washing the towels and the sheets and like some of my delicate things and I couldn't do it. So he had to do all of the laundry for the first six weeks. And so, yeah, he can now mark this one off his list. I'll take over now. And I can now lift things. I can lift things that are 15 and 20 pounds and it doesn't bother me at all. And just a week ago, if you all watched the video where I was planting on my flowers and my herb garden, I was lifting bags of potting soil that weighed I don't know, 10 pounds for sure. I had no pain, no discomfort. I didn't have that pinching, pulling, feeling, and burning. If I did lift something that was too heavy, I can now lift things and I really don't have to worry about it hurting me. Now, I do have my limits. I'm probably not gonna pick something up that weighs 30 pounds, which that you know wouldn't happen normally anyway. But lifting potting soil, planting my plants, doing things around the house, you know, normal lifting up to 15 or 20 pounds is totally fine now at the three month recovery point. So how is my energy level now at three months post-op? I gotta say, I feel so good. I'm about 95% back to my normal energy level. Every week during my recovery, I seem to regain more and more of my energy. So for the first two or three or four weeks after surgery, after dinner, I would go sit on the couch. I was wiped out from seven o'clock until bedtime. I just didn't move. I sat on the couch pretty much every single night. I took a nap. I took a Judy. If you all been on my channel, you know that I took a Judy and I had to. I was just depleted. My body took everything I had, every ounce of energy to heal. And then it started getting better. I noticed that after dinner, I would have more energy to clean the dishes and help clean up after dinner and I might do something after that before I went and sat on the couch. Well now after dinner I do around it's summertime the sun is out later so I'm up doing things I'm outside at night and once I do get on the couch I am not taking a nap I am not falling asleep and my husband even said to me the other day I can tell Renee that one of the biggest things that is a tip off to him that I am almost back to normal is I am not falling asleep on the couch at night. Now, I'm not gonna say never because last night I actually did fall asleep on the couch, but most nights I'm awake. We're watching TV, we're talking, I'm wide awake until it's time to go to bed. But last night it was kind of cool outside. I got on the couch, I got snuggled up in my blanket and apparently I fell asleep because I woke up and realized that I had missed the ending of a show. Well now, today I'm gonna have to watch that last 10 minutes so that I'm caught up. So tonight when we sit down to watch the show, I know what's going on. But my husband was laughing at me because apparently while I was asleep on the couch last night, my daughter came downstairs and asked me a question and I didn't respond. And Randy said she was standing in the kitchen going, mom, mom. And I was just wiped out, y'all. I had a really active yet day yesterday. That's why I say I'm 95% back to my energy level. But talking about sleeping, I am now sleeping like a baby. I honestly don't know if it's 
the fact that I'm fully recovered. It could be the hormones. I'm taking hormone replacement therapy. Or it could just be that I don't have any of that discomfort from my enlarged uterus or the fibroid that was in there or the bleeding that was always keeping me awake. I don't have any of those worries. I don't have any of those physical ailments. And so I sleep like a baby. And it is so nice because for about a year or two leading up to my hysterectomy, I couldn't sleep. My calves would cramp up during the night because I was anemic. I just couldn't sleep. I had a lot to, uh, going on in my mind. I was worried. I was thinking about a lot of things. Plus, I had all of this stuff happening in here. I couldn't get comfortable. My belly hurt. The fibroid hurt. I always had to constantly pee during the night. And, you know, there's a lot going on. So, I didn't sleep good. Now that I'm recovered and things are back to normal, I am sleeping great. So I brought y'all into the bathroom to talk about my hormone replacement therapy. I've been on this now. Let's see. I started hormone replacement therapy on week three. If you all have been watching all my videos on my recovery and you saw this video, this is where I told you that I had a mental meltdown not even exaggerating, a mental meltdown, and called my doctor and begged for hormones. My menopause symptoms, because they removed my ovaries during my hysterectomy, my menopause symptoms were so severe, I had a mental coming apart, uh, and I had to have some hormones. I told you all that I started using a transdermal patch of estradiol. So this patch gets put on my booty, or you can put it... Um, up here in the front in your pelvic area and it transmits an estrogen that your body absorbs. Well, I've been on this now for nine weeks and it is great. I have no menopause symptoms. And when I say no, I mean zero, absolutely none. No night sweats, no hot flashes, no mood swings, none of the things. I have none, but I'm doing great on the 0.0375 estradiol. So I put this patch on twice a week. This is a one month supply of the estradiol patch. So every month I would go to my pharmacy. I was paying $25. That's what my insurance cost was to get a 30 day supply. Well, recently my insurance company contacted me and said, hey, we see that you're consistently using this medication. Do you want to get it through the mail order that my insurance offers? And I'm like, sure. I don't have to keep going to my pharmacy once a month to pick up my prescription. Did you know that if you do the mail order through your insurance, and I'm, I'm assuming that most insurance is like this, but if you do the mail order, you will get a 90 day supply for the cost of a one month supply. That's what mine turned out to be. To go get this at my pharmacy for 30 days, I was paying $25 a box. To get it mail order for a 90 day supply through my insurance company, it cost me $30. That's a no brainer. But check with your insurance company if you get medication. That applies to any medication. My husband takes some prescription medication he got on the 90 day mail order version of that and we have saved a ton of money. So back to this uh, estradiol patch. I told you all videos ago that I thought the patch was irritating my skin. I've discovered that it's not the patch that was irritating my skin. What was bothering me was the alcohol that I was putting on a little cotton pad and I was rubbing it on my skin to try to get that little bit of glue residue off. You can see right here where I took the patch off the other day. You can see there's a, there's a little bit of sticky residue there, but I'm just not rubbing it with the alcohol. That's what was bothering my skin. So it'll come off, I just leave it. When I went from my prescription at my pharmacy to the mail order version, they did put me on a different brand. Again, Estradiol is Estradiol. This is just another brand that produces it a very, they were all generic brands, but this is just a generic brand. This is what I get in the mail. And when I got this one, I thought, okay, they put me on something not as good. This is cheaper. It's not gonna stick. It looks like this. The packaging is not as fancy as the one I was getting at my local pharmacy, but actually I like this one better. The patch is smaller and it is totally clear. You can not even see it when it's on my body. Is, where is it? Whoop, my new patch right there. Very small, clear, can't even see it. This has turned out to be a really good 
good option for me. So having a hysterectomy with six incisions and scars in my belly isn't stopping me at the least. You can barely even see my scars anymore, right? There's one, two, three, four, and five. One thing I have noticed though, because last weekend was my first weekend out in the sun, out in the pool for a long period of time, and I can get a little tingling feeling when the sun is directly on those incisions. And so a lot of the time I just kind of throw my cover up over my belly and keep the suture sites out of the direct sun. Yes, I have on sunscreen, I have on 50 on my belly, but there's just something about that tingling that makes me think, hmm, this is probably not a great idea. So I keep them covered up. So that's how I'm feeling six weeks after my total laparoscopic hysterectomy. I'm feeling great, 95% back to normal. And if you're new to my channel and you wanna know all about my hysterectomy, my journey, my recovery, why I had to have a hysterectomy, all those videos, because I documented my entire experience will be in the description box below. So you can check it out and get all the info. See you later.